Hi, and welcome to Chess for Life in the time of coronavirus. Today, we are thrilled to welcome Grandmaster John Ems to the show. John is not only a strong English Grandmaster who has represented England at two Olympiads, um, he also has played on the World Senior Team for England, um, and last year he won the gold medal for his board. He's also written lots of chess books. He's written or co-authored 40 books, including a survival guide to rook endings, uh, which he liked because it helped him learn a lot more about rook endings. Uh, also numerous openings books, um, in particular the Move by Move series, where it would explain the ideas of the opening. And he's done some books on the Nimzo Indian. He's also uh, coaches juniors, um, both in schools and one-to-one -one and in groups. Uh, and he has also been a very good coach for England, uh, including a trip to Philadelphia, where I was one of his coaches, uh, Julie Harwa and Graham Buckley. So we'll talk more about that later. John, a big welcome to the show. Lovely to be here. John, can you start by telling us a little bit about your chess career, uh, what attracted you to chess, um, and how you improved to become a grandmaster? Yeah, sure. I, um, I started when I was about um, six years old. My dad taught me the moves. And um, I, was, I was very lucky because he was, he was like a, uh, he played a little bit when he was younger, and he was really keen, and he was incredibly supportive, actually, and he used to drive me around to, um, all tournaments because well, I lived in Norwich, which is obviously sort of on my way from anywhere basically. <laughs> so he and all, all the sort of like the major tournaments are sort of like in London. Um, so we would sort of I, I remember getting up at five o'clock in the morning, driving to London for a sort of like a sort of like an under 12s tournament, and um, yeah, he would do that. So I was very, very fortunate that I had supportive parents. So he that. was very dedicated and you were very dedicated. You must have been keen to want to get up at five in the morning to play. Well, I didn't have much choice about that. <laughs> <laughs> really? I was quite keen. I mean, for thinking about it now, I mean, it seems incredible sort of getting up at five o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning, getting home really late on a Sunday night and then sort of going to school on the Monday. Right. I mean, it just doesn't, doesn't seem possible, basically. Um, so, um, so I played really a lot when I was younger so yeah. many tournaments and that, I think that's kind of like how I built my school skill up really. So your dad must have, it must have taken up most of his weekends then? I guess so, certainly when I was, certainly when I was about, I don't know, maybe sort of 10, 11, 12 at that stage. Um, um, obviously once I got a little bit older I could sort of, you know, go to some forms myself. Go on the train um, or something? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, it probably wasn't every weekend but it certainly was quite a few weekends and, and the fact was we lived so far away. I mean, I remember going to like places like Manchester and Liverpool, which were like about 250 mile journeys. I mean, God, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, incredible. Yeah, uh, as a, as a, like in my late teens, and at that at that age, I wasn't going on the trains on my own, except to London, where I knew the route. Uh, but my parents would drive. There was this one in Bedworth, and somehow. It was a long journey, and then I don't remember where Bedworth is now, but we, yeah. we had people on the floor or something. And uh, I played in Bedworth. There was, yeah. a, there was like this tournament called the Coventry and District Chess uh, Congress. Yes. Yeah, and it was like quite—it's quite popular. I played in that one, and it's like once every three months or something, so quite regular. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, and I think we used to sleep on church floors, basically. Yes, <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. Good. But it was really good fun, but that was, that was definitely like a four o'clock in the morning job, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was still great, because they had these junior tournaments with really loads of trophies, loads of medals, so all the, all the kids loved it, basically. I think that must have been the draw, yeah. I think so, yeah. And then actually, yeah, and then actually... Once I actually started playing in the under one, you know, the majors or the opens and that, it, it somehow didn't quite feel quite as good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like cash instead, which was okay, of course, but um, much yeah. more as well. Did you, did you find you improved very quickly as a kid? Yeah, I did. I did. So I was actually quite, I mean, I was a relatively late starter in that I didn't really play any graded games until I was around about 10. Yeah. Um, so obviously, they're still quite young, but compared to like, now it's um some of the juniors start playing you know 
Brave Games quite a lot earlier. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think between, say, 10 and maybe about 10 and 14, I maybe gained about 80 ECF points or something. Okay. So, you know, you know uh, yeah, and then maybe about, and then sort of slowed down when I got about 16 or something. But yeah, I think uh, just playing in so many of those tournaments just helped so much because I, I wasn't really doing much study in yeah. between. Um, but I think a lot of players in England. Um, so you learn through play rather than studying theory as such? I think so, absolutely. I didn't study theory. Um, but obviously I, I played, I mean, I, I kind of studied what I played and then each time I played a game, it sort of got a little bit better. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. And you had quite a, a, a lively chess scene at your university, I think. Um, Where did I, you go? I went to Nottingham University. Okay. And uh, first year, we, yeah, I mean, I did play for this, the team in the first couple of years, and it was quite good fun. Um, although, I think I stopped in my third year. I didn't actually play so much chess at university at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I was part of the team. I mean, it's quite, I mean, it's ridiculous, you know, it's just sort of like even getting to the match was an achievement when you play for university. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in one match, we just had four players out of six, so I just got a couple of um, my... Um, mates to play they could hardly play but i taught them i, I taught one guy the um um hippopotamus opening that's why i told him to offer a draft as well most and he did and the guy accepted <laughs> so and like basically he could hardly play but i mean that, that so that's half a point but the other guy who was black he insisted he wanted to play the uh, dragon sicilian <laughs> god <laughs> so um i i sort of taught him sort of the moves because obviously he could play i mean he's probably around about 50 standard ECF, say, let's say. But I told him, and, he, and basically he, um, he said, well, someone said, what happens if they push their H pawn up the board, basically? Um, and I said, well, if that happens, that, you know, forget it, you've lost, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened, and you got checkmated in about 15 minutes. Oh, no. So, um, yeah. <laughs> So we got half a point. I don't know. I can't remember whether that's enough to win us the match, but um, you know. But to be honest, I didn't. I, I stopped. I didn't really play very much at university. Yeah. And which stage did you get your GM norms? Uh, well, when I finished university, I decided to play full time, and at that stage, I wasn't an IM or a GM, so it. it I sort of like decided to play full time, and go for those, and I, I think it took me about. That's a bold decision. Well, yeah, I could say that, yeah. I mean, I just wanted to do it. So I didn't, yeah. I didn't really feel yeah. it as a role position. If you want to do something, you kind of just do it, I guess. Um, yeah. yeah. I think I had a few months where I, I worked just to uh, sort of get some money together. Yeah. Um, but I just felt more and more that's kind of what I wanted to do. I didn't really have any necessary time frame for it. As in, mm -hmm. I didn't think I'm going to do this forever. Um, but I, I just felt like there was, I, there was unfinished business. I kind of wanted to get those titles. Or yeah. certainly the I am title to start off with, and then once I got that, I thought, well, let's go for the GM title as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how long did that take? After? Um, well, I the I am title took about a year, and then the GM title took another uh, another four and a half years, I think. Mm. Yeah, so pretty quick, huh? So I think I was about twenty seven when I got the GM title. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. And then and then you were doing um, junior coaching at that time. Um, I did a bit, um, while I was actually going for all my titles, I didn't do too much, but I did a little bit. I moved down to Kent, basically, and did some junior coaching at with Kent, with Kent Junior Chess Association. And, um, but then once I got my uh, Grandmaster title, um, I still played for a little bit longer, but then I started doing more coaching. Okay. Yeah. And actually, not so much that. The big thing then, the big change that happens was that I started doing, getting involved with chess publishing. Okay. Um, so I started writing quite a few books and also doing some editing as well. Yeah. Um, and then it got to a stage that really I couldn't do much playing anymore because the actual um, writing and especially the editing, it was really hard and sort of like full-time work, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of just didn't have that much time off at all, basically. Just maybe, just like a normal job, just maybe like three or four weeks off a year or something like that. And, yeah, yeah. And then, I didn't really want to be honest with you. I, I, I felt so exhausted. But I didn't want to spend that time. Yeah. Exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. Playing chess. Two yeah. Weeks at the British Championship, <laughs> basically. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You were living with um, Grandmaster Chris Ward at one point. Yeah, we shared a flat at one point. Yeah. So actually, he was. I mean, he was actually um, 
uh, basically being able to train, this is by when we're both going for our title, so being able to train with someone who's in the same position is actually a really, really good thing to be able to do. I definitely yeah. recommend, I mean, obviously, you know, you don't have to be sharing a flat with someone to do it, especially not these days, basically. But um, I would certainly recommend, if, you, if someone is sort of a young and ambitious player, if they have a training partner who's a similar standard with the same goals as goals, I think that's a really good thing yeah. to be able yeah. to do. Um, you know, uh, I didn't actually just do it. It wasn't just, I mean, obviously with Chris, that's great, but I've actually done something similar with other players as well, although not so regularly. Yeah. But it's, all, it's always been beneficial because, um, you know, the, the player you play, you're training with, it's going to have sort of some strength that you don't have and, and vice versa. So there's always going to, you're always going to have sort of like, um, or, or uh, sort of give and receive good ideas. Yeah, actually. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I definitely recommend that. Yeah. And then this trip to Philadelphia, where you were a coach. That oh, was, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was, it was Graham Buckley, Julie Harwar, and me. Um, and you were, and, but you were playing as well as coaching. It was the World Open. Right, yeah. 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 This was in 1991. So this was actually just um, like a couple of years. I've just been playing a couple of years professionally, basically. Yeah. And, um, I remember with that, the games were like at five in the evening. And... Do you remember? And you have to take your own board and clock along. Exactly. I mean, I don't know if there's... I mean, I haven't... I've only actually played in the USA twice. USA twice. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure if it's the same now, whether you still have to play, um, take your board and clock with you, Dean. Um, but it's a bit of a shock. I can't... <laughs> we, did, we, yeah. did we actually buy boards and sets there? We didn't, we didn't have any of it. Obviously, we hadn't realised. <laughs> we turned up with nothing. And so then we were playing on these opponents. The opponents would have would have these boards and clocks. Exactly. Going. But everybody would have a different different types of pieces and different clocks. And um, and so yeah. that would be fine. But then, uh -huh. then we'd, we'd go to um, Wendy's in the evening. Do you remember there was this, this kind of burger joint? Yeah, Wendy's or Dave. Finish like at one or two in the morning. And this Wendy's would be open till two or three in the morning. And so, so the team would go and they had this deal where if you ordered it and then the food didn't arrive within two minutes or whatever, five minutes it must have been. <laughs> you remember? And they would um and they'd give you the free they'd give you a free meal. And we would always arrange it. So we ordered four very different meals. <laughs> Every single night we were getting these. These like free pancakes or whatever it was we were having. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, it was funny. very strategic ordering, basically. We were very strategic. We were chess yeah. players. We were very strategic about <laughs> <laughs> it. We got the, the whole tournament through most of the tournament, hardly having to pay for any of our meals mm. at all. But the staff didn't seem to mind. They didn't mind. It was just, oh yeah, we've missed it again. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. And then we had to write back these reports to CFAX every day. And and we we spent you know quite a while planning what we'd write and we'd wrote some very entertaining reports back uh, because of course in those days um, uh, that you know there wasn't internet we were we were just sending it back uh, and uh, but then we started wasn't there one where we made up the game we made up the game that went back onto CPAX and it got published <laughs> anyway did you enjoy your your, your time as a, a, a coach for the English juniors. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, obviously that was. I think that was, that one was probably my first ever one. I maybe one of the first ever ones I did actually. But since then, I've done I've done many. Um, uh, some memorable ones actually. I was there when when um, for example when Harriet Hunt won the uh, girl world girls under twenty. Oh wow! Well, that must have been fun. That was a fantastic experience. Yeah, and um, where did that take place? That took place in a um, Polish place called Zagar, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I've been to various places. Um, I think I, I, did, I went uh, quite a few times in the 90s. Um, Bratislava, that was, that was a really nice place. Went to there. Um, and uh, then I think there's a, there a bit of a gap, but then I sort of started going again sort of about seven or eight years ago. I think I've done about five or six since then as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, they're all they're, they're incredibly hard work, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can imagine. Yeah, the coaches, yeah. the coaches tend to have about um, a group of four or five juniors, yeah. and they have uh, you sort of prepare them in the morning, so they all get about an hour each, and um, <laughs> yeah. and then obviously 
uh, it varies how much they actually know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and um, and then sort of like um, yeah, and then you kind of you kind of find out who everyone's playing sort of about eleven o'clock at night. So the coach will be sort of like making up all the databases for a couple of hours, and yeah. stuff, you know. So uh, you get a little bit of a little bit of a break while they're actually playing their games. Uh, yeah. But you know, to be honest with you, you know, you, you sort of do ten days of it, completely exhausted at the end. But somehow yeah. it's such a great sort of experience and such a sort mm -hmm. of a interesting. Work. Yeah, no, I mean, if, especially, um, yeah, young players, I mean, if they're uh, into something and enthusiastic, I mean, it's, it's got so much, it gives, it's got so much, it gives you so much energy somehow. It's, uh, yeah, it, exactly, it, it, yeah. it's incredible. Somehow, yeah. Somehow during the tournament, you have a lot of energy. It's just right at the very end. Basically. Yeah, Everyone yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> at the other end of the scale, how, how did you find the world seniors? Oh, that was, that was amazing. To be honest with you, I just love team tournaments. I've always, in a way, I've always kind of not preferred necessarily team tournaments, but I, I think I've sometimes played better in team tournaments than individuals. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the actual, I mean, you know, the, I played in the World Senior Team Championship in 2018. That's the first one I played in because I just qualified, so it's over 50s. Yeah. And uh, we actually had a really good team. And but also, it was actually great just going there and seeing some of the legends of the game sort of playing mm -hmm. like. Support yeah, yeah, and Jan Elvis, and um, uh, you know, sort of um, Raphael Vaganian, yeah, sort of like some of the sort of, some of the players who are the, who are the leading players of the world. Um, well, see, John, John Spielman as well from England, of course. yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so, uh, it's, it's great, and actually, also, I think when these players play in a tournament like this, suddenly they become really motivated again mm. and actually play good chess because they've got a chance of winning it. Well, exactly, but compared to when they're actually just playing in a random tournament, yeah. Yeah. I think as you get older, sometimes like you need more motivation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you need you need the tournament to really mean something, mm -hmm. uh, rather than just sort of like trying to gain rating points or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I found those found um, both World Senior Team Championships um, very. Amazing experience. I was, I was actually the captain of the team both times as well, so I had to sort of pick and pick the team as well, yeah. which uh, was okay. You managed to avoid any <laughs> team disputes. I think though, generally people were, you know, it worked pretty well. We had five players, and we you um had had to pick four for the match. Yeah. And um, and actually, in both occasions, the players felt great, and they always wanted to play, but also kind of well, the rest as well. as well. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have. I don't think I've had an occasion where we, we had like two players who wanted to play and the rest had to be press game. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed those experiences. Yeah. Okay, we're we're tenth of June, twenty twenty. Uh, UK is still really struggling with coronavirus, even though it appears most other countries have managed to defeat it pretty well. Uh, how how has how have the last few months been for you, John? Um, yeah, well, we're we're all okay here, so that's that's good. Um, uh, sort of uh, work-wise, obviously, as I'm, as I said, I, I do a lot of teaching in schools. Um, so obviously, I'm not doing nowhere near as much as I as I usually do. Um, but I'm doing some um, some schools online, okay, and also doing still one-to-one -one online. But actually, what I've also been, um, I mean, obviously, even though uh, I haven't been doing so much school coaching we have been actually organizing school tournaments so oh, okay. together, and actually today we yeah. actually we actually had our first um tournament organized oh, wow and we had um we had i think eight senior schools and seven primary schools oh, wow. both playing at the same time in different tournaments on lead chess oh, wow. so we had about 100 and uh, i know maybe about 200 um wow. students playing that's really good. So I organised that with, um, with the help of Chris Ward. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we hope to we plan to do that every couple of weeks. Uh, Brilliant. So um, so they're still getting their sort of like um, you know fill of chess. <laughs> mm. And um, actually, you know, um, some of them they, they I mean yeah they do really enjoy actually the students. Some of the clubs they've got quite quite a lot of members of these clubs. Um, the only thing is obviously is that when we get actually to want to go to the schools and they play normal. I'm always encouraging them to play slowly. Um, but at the moment, of course, <laughs> 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 right, 
it's um no it's kind of like five minute plus three seconds and yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so there's gonna have to be when i bet they love it though <laughs> they absolutely love it and they're all i don't know if either of you know much about lead chess the way it works the tools but yeah. they they have these arena stuff oh yeah 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 where you basically sort of just wait you play a game and then you finish it and then you just wait for the next available person so you're not waiting very long. It's not like a Swiss event where you yeah. have to wait for it one to finish. Um, but you kind of like have these things where if you win two games in a row, you suddenly your score multiplies by two. So you get two points for a win normally. Yeah. But if you win two games in a row, if you, your next game doubles. So if you win that, you get four points. Okay. Mm. And so they basically, you can really, if you get on a roll, you can actually get lots of points really quick. You can actually get lots of points really quickly. Yeah. Mm. Um, but also you have this thing called the berserker mode mm. where you can kind of, you, you can actually allow yourself only to have half your time. But if you win the game, you get more points. <laughs> okay, I bet they're all into that. They are, except they really are into that. But except <laughs> that in these tournaments, we've turned off the berserker mode. Uh... Five minutes is already quite a short time. We don't want people yeah. playing two and a half minute chess. Yeah. Not while we're watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, John. So you're in lockdown. You can take one of your favourite games with you that you've played. Yeah. Um, which game are you choosing and why? Okay. Um, the yeah, the game I've chosen is a game I've played against um, British Grandmaster called Jonathan Hawkins um, uh, in the state of the British Championship in um, 2017. So one reason I've chosen it is actually because it's actually a fairly recent game. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I did play quite a lot of fun games um, early on, but this one's actually quite a recent game. And um, it's, it's a, it is a long game, but I, I just really, sort of like, while I was playing, of course, I didn't particularly enjoy it, because I'm, I'm never really enjoying games. But afterwards, I did actually, it did sort of give me a bit of a warm glow, basically. <laughs> you know, and um, it's slightly unusual in the sort of like, um, there's sort of like different stages to the game. And um, there's also quite a lot of toing and throwing as well. <laughs> Um, but somehow um, there were certain things I really liked, certain moves that I played that I really liked uh, in the game. So that's why that's why it's one of my favourite games. Uh, it was a very very aesthetic finish, I have to say. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, no, it can that. That's that, so that was a really nice finish, I have to say. So uh... I mean, when I actually when I I mean when I looked at the game later on, um, somehow it felt like it should have been easier to. to for example, to win the final stages, but you know, while I was actually playing the game, it, it just felt that there's always pressure, and somehow it just felt a lot harder. <laughs> so um, probably there. I mean, I think there were some easier wins, for example, that I missed. Um, uh, what's funny, the engine uh, shows me, but um, but even so, you know, uh, I'd really like to finish it. Yeah. Oh, great. And also, well, another thing was actually, of course, is that um, uh, the British Championship in uh, 2017. Um, uh, I started playing again, like a little bit more in 2013. I started saying, well, "I'm going to start playing the British Championship." You know, I'm, you know, I know it's uh, two weeks, but you know, come on, <laughs> got to start doing these things again. <laughs> so, cause, you know, uh, um, uh, you never know. Sort of like, um, you know, there's not going to be, not going to forever, basically. So you've got to, yeah. you've got to play when you, when you can. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So I started playing and. Um, and uh, the first one was a bit of a disaster. I think I lost about 25 Velo points. But then, like, when I started studying a bit more and playing a bit more, I gradually started playing better in the British. And in 2017, I really did sort of, like, work hard in the preceding sort of, like, few weeks, like, on tactics. And I really felt in that tournament that I was the sharpest I've been for a really long time. Oh, wow. And I actually felt like I was playing games that, you know, uh, there's about three or four games that I played that I was really, really pleased with. Um, that, you know, I've been expecting to play in like 20 years earlier. You see what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, and uh, it also is an incredible challenge because you, uh, when you play in the British Championship up against players who are playing full time, who are also much younger and who are also incredibly talented as well, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, but I always like, it's always fun for the challenge, even though I, I know it's incredibly hard to play. Yeah, British. yeah. Yeah, British is a tough tournament. It is. It's, yeah, well, it's always been tough, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, even that 1997 tournament that we played in, that was incredibly tough. That was, that was, that was a super tough, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, but even, you know, it, even now, you know, 
I think obviously the, the general level of chess has gone up as well anyway. Yeah, yeah, of um, course, yeah. I don't think anyone can die, deny that. And I mean, obviously, um, uh, even though Britain is not sort of, or England rather, um, is not so high on the lists in the, in the world terms they were in, in 1990s and 1980s, we've still got some really incredibly talented players. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, who, uh, uh, you know, who are really tough to play against. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you, John, very much for being on the program. We're now going to look at your game. Okay. Okay, let's have a look at the game. We have managed with enormous technical difficulties to flip the board. So John at the bottom is black and uh, the other Jonathan is uh, top with white. And the game started with 1d4, which is basically uh, what Jonathan always plays, isn't it? I think, uh, John, he's always uh, a big uh, 1d4 player. He's pretty much a 1d4 mainline player, basically. Yeah, and Queen c2, that's also is pretty much... His, I've seen him play 4e3 as well, actually. Uh, yeah, um, I can't remember now. I think I spent most of my time uh, preparing for Queen c2. I thought that was his, his main yeah. point of the time. Yeah. Um, it's uh, so... Yeah. So castles, and I think... Oh, he's a brave man then, taking on John Ems, who's written three books in the Nimzo Indian. Yeah, but actually probably my books were probably aimed at slight, a level slightly below <laughs> Jonathan, so um, I don't think he had too much to worry about on that. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I've seen him play E4 as well here, I think, actually, but... Um, oh, but right, has he, yeah. I um, think he... Again, I think I was... I think he, I thought he was going to go knight f3, because I think he was playing quite a bit of that at the time. Maybe he's been playing e4 since then, or maybe he played it a while before. Yeah. But our preparation was mainly on knight f3. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's quite a quite an interesting line, actually. This, it's um, uh, d6. Oh, okay, d6. d6. So, yeah, black can obviously do... Um, I think c5 is the main move there, actually, for black. Yeah, that's right. Although it's, it's always... Uh, I mean, what, what are they doing? They, they take on c5, knight a6... Yeah, and then and then um, I think Morozevich played c6, which was uh, I think he did in this position. quite the main move is uh, g3. G3, so that's that's... quite long and theoretical. Yeah, yeah. Um, white has, maybe white has a tiny edge at the end, or it's a draw or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which kind of puts me off slightly playing that line from black. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so, uh... you know, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so d6 is more, but you just get kind of like a Nimzo type position. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Um, I mean, obviously, one could go e4 here as well, I guess. But um, I, I guess you can play you can play e5 there, can't you? If uh... maybe e5 or even maybe c5. Um, ah, okay. Oh, you, you, yeah, you wouldn't mind playing uh, some sort of modern Benoni, would you? With uh, with d5, he goes d5. Go d5 here. No, yeah. that looks like a good a good snake, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly does. Yeah. So he went um, he went a3, didn't he? Just to uh, to get this uh, this typical position. And you went uh, b6, so uh, and g3. Yeah, g3. I mean, a lot of players would play. I mean, for example, bishop g5. Would yeah, be, yeah. Would be quite there. Um, but g3 is certainly normal as well. I yeah. We just get a, a pretty normal position, really. So is this this position here? Would this have still featured in one of your books? I oh, know. I don't think so. No. Um, I mean, the thing about the Nimzo Indian, there's just so many ways that both sides can play it. Um, it's and you get so many different types of pawn structures as well. Yeah, but, um, yeah. You know, you, you could write about five or six books on the NIM, so and every single book recommends something different. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's not like it's not like the Shreshnikov. Example, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, it's true. It's, it's true. Exactly the same pawn structure every time. I mean, I do like the flexibility of the NIM, the Indian. Um, I mean, you 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 played it all your life, haven't you, uh, John? Because well, yeah, basically. Forever, yeah. yeah. I mean, I started playing maybe once about twelve or thirteen. Yeah. And uh, I haven't really stopped. I mean, I've played one or two other things on and off, but, you know, I've always found it to be uh, very reliable. Yeah. I like your choice. If, um, you know, uh, if you're unsure what to do, just play the new one. So B3, ah, Bishop E4, this lovely manoeuvre. Yeah, Bishop E4, just putting Bishop on a nice safe square. Um, yeah. Will you play Bishop B2 now? Yeah, Bishop B2. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is where I played Queen B8. Indeed. Yeah, so basically, um, I mean, I, what I was trying to do here is I, was, I wanted to go B5 to get okay. 
um, activity on the queen side. Maybe also a4 first. If they go b4, then go b5. Right. Trying to get some light squares on the on the queen side. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I think if white does nothing, then I think b5 is actually quite quite nice for black actually. Yeah. So did he play rook to c1? Ah, oh, he was in bishop h3. Really good move. Bishop h3. Ah, okay. Um, I mean, basically, black's really happy if white just moves the knight and swaps bishops. Yeah. Um, you know, black's white's only then got one remaining bishop, and black can still play on the knight squares. But this this plan of actually moving the bishop and then actually then moving the knight to chase my bishop away, and then sort of going if my bishop moves back to g6, then the bishop can come back to g2, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if I go back down the uh, long diagonal, then white can sometimes just go f3 and e4, and yeah, you know. yeah. Um, so I think this is the way the white has to play if white tries to want some advantage from position. Yeah, I guess he's also kind of threatening d5 as well, isn't he yeah, here? Yeah, well, actually, this is, what did I, I think I played c6 here. That's right, yeah. Well, I think that's that's a little bit slow, but I was actually concerned about this move d5 during the game. Yeah, I mean, and if you go, after, yeah. Afterwards, I, I felt like, I checked it, and I should probably just go b5 anyway. Okay, and if he goes d5... Yeah, then I think there's some, I could even, b4 is possible, but even e5, it's not... It's not that bad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's actually it's actually okay for black, but during the game I was concerned by this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Just to show that the the idea is that if E D we can go Bishop D seven. That's the uh, yeah. That's the uh, the nasty point. Mm. Not really that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think there's a number of things that black can do. One of which is to go um, B four actually. Um, okay. Right. I think there's a line if you go yeah. B5, D5, B4. B5, B4. Um, Can I take it? Takes. Yeah, this is right. Takes. And if they take on A8, I think you can take on C. Maybe take on C3. That was quite interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, why not? Indeed. Yeah, rook takes B8, B2. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be fine here somehow, aren't you? Yeah, it's, I mean, that's only one option. No, I think I'd oh, you take on B2 even? Yeah, I take on B2. Oh, good lord. Wow. Yeah. I think that was quite interesting. And then they take on F8, and then I think I take with the, uh, the knight or the king, I can't remember. Maybe king. And then I go knight D2, bishop C2. Yeah, that's a tough one to... Uh... Yeah, I can't remember if that. Maybe I'll take on, with, on F8 with the knight, actually. But, yeah, or well, nice uh, happy three. Yeah, yeah. Black's only choice. Black had other ideas. I mean, I, I had plenty of resources, basically. So I should do... I think if I had this in the game, I'd definitely go B5. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, C six is a it's a pretty it's a pretty typical move in these positions. It's uh, sometimes yeah. black just goes d five as well. Exactly. As well. Yeah. A Slav structure. Yeah. Uh, but now his next move, um, uh, I hadn't I hadn't seen. It. I was expecting knight d two. Yeah. Um, but he surprised me. He played with knight. Ah, okay. Because um, if I want to keep my bishop now, I have to spend another map to pay h six. Okay. Yeah. And then he goes f three, and then bishop h seven e four, and I, I wasn't liking that at all. <laughs> No, no, it looks a bit. Yeah, you feel like you've somehow you feel like you've been a bit outplayed there, don't you? Yeah, exactly. yeah, well, yeah. I was basically just there around about here. Nice no, force is a very good move. So I felt like I basically just had to sort of give up both the second bishop. Okay. And uh, I went um, d5 straight away. f3, bishop g6, takes, takes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then get rook e1, rook f1 maybe? That's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you went actually, actually, I was remembering now. I think you might have a good move in to the rookie one. I think maybe um, the move A4. Yeah, I was, I was just about to say that, actually. That looks... Uh, yeah. Um, that, first of all, that gets the bishop A3 becomes possible, but also I think it discourages B5. Yeah, at the very least, uh, you'll have to think uh, carefully about it because you might just... I guess you're just going to take and go C5, I, I guess, is... Uh, yeah, I think that might... Yeah. That might... Uh, but at the very least, you've got to you've got to think carefully about that because that's pretty risky. Yeah, I think I wasn't. No, I think it more. I think it actually sort of stopped B five. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I think a I think uh, a four would have actually. Um, uh, yeah, it would have been a very good move. Yeah. 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 I mean, maybe you can, maybe you can go. Punish my C six basically. Yeah. I mean, maybe you can go. You can probably do stuff like C five, maybe a little bit, bit more easily because. B three is weak. I mean, so you know, yeah, DC five, DC, but I mean, that's not doing too badly. I mean, yeah. White's definitely got some. Yeah, White's definitely got some. Uh, you got to watch out with C five tactically as well. But okay. Yeah, because it might be like taking and taking on D five. Yeah, no, there's there's some there's some tricks in all there, but uh, 
Okay, so a four, but rookie, yeah, rookie one maybe is a bit is a bit slow. Yeah, he goes. Um, yeah, but now uh, now maybe, um, funny enough, actually, in this position, maybe White should go actually block it up with, with c five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which again, which stops a lot of my queenside counterplay, and obviously, you know, the bishops don't like the block position so much, but. Um, yeah, I suppose White's getting e4 in very soon, so... Yeah, and again, I'm, I'm kind of reduced to sort of a fairly passive position. Yeah, yeah. On wait and waiting. Yeah. Um, so, I think that's probably a chance for White to gain some small advantages, either the a4 or the last move, or, or the c5 here. But yeah. the e4, of course, is, um, is very natural, that's what he played. Yeah. The, I mean, he wants to keep, that, keep the position as open as possible. Yeah. Which makes sense. Um, but actually, so I, I, I took on c4 with the b4. Back. Actually, I kind of actually just just briefly here. I actually thought Jonathan had actually blundered because I thought I played knight b six and I thought blundered, blundered. And I thought he just overlooked the, the double threat of knight a four and knight takes c four. Oh, good lord! <laughs> yeah, so I actually got temporarily got very excited here, thinking well, you know what's happening. But then because I knew I had to play knight b six, it was a natural move. Yeah, so yeah. Very quickly. And but then he just played c takes d five, and I realised, or even maybe before we played it, I realised actually that. Um, yeah, knight a4, he just take on c6 for the queen. Okay. Yeah, and, and knight... then knight takes b2, d takes e6, and he's getting three pawns, and also my pieces yeah. are uncoordinated. Yeah, okay. And, um, so... Yeah, he's probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought if anything, white's better here. So, um... So just played, uh, yeah, but this this, uh, yeah, this, is a, this is a nice nice position for black, actually. Yeah, uh, I got, yeah, I was actually much happier now that I'd actually got knight b6 in. Yeah, yeah. And 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 uh, somehow, you know, force him to open the c file as well. You know, it's just, uh, he's just done yeah. all, all his work. He's done all your work for you, really. Just uh, just uh, giving you the, yeah, with, with the, the c and b files there. So, uh, yeah, no, interesting. So he went bishop c1. Yeah, that's logical. Yeah. Rook c8. Um, rook c8 yeah. Queen d3. Queen a7. And obviously, the queen might be useful on that long diagonal. Yeah, nice yeah. move. Nice move. Queen a7. Yeah. I was thinking after, yeah, okay, so bishop g5. Bishop and rook c6. Played, no? Rook c6, you played, yeah. I was actually, he went rook c1. I was happy just to exchange one pair of rooks and then put the knight on c4. Yeah, that's uh, that's true, yeah. And then I thought, what if I can get rook b8 and then, um, then it looks absolutely fine for black. Yeah, it's, it's so frustrating for White. It's really so hard for to think, you know, what what is White going to do here? Actually, somehow uh, it's always the nightmare positions you end up in. You know, just imperceptibly, you just end up in something where you you can't really see much way to improve your position. Whereas with Black, you can yeah. think you, you, with Black you can think of lots of ways. Yeah, I mean, what Johnson did was absolutely completely logical, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, earlier on, just to open the position up, and then, but then somehow uh, with after knight b six, Black's absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. That's just sometimes the way it works. I think. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. I mean, uh, it's just uh, so, sometimes the, there's something in the position that just means that uh, if you just choose the wrong path, somehow it's it, it's just yeah. Yeah. So, so I think what Johnson did here was very direct. He just he decided his plan to um, to basically um, swap on f6 and, um, and then attack by like, b5. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just play knight b6 and then take the takes and f4. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I'd seen all this in advance, and I, I knew I could go queen d7, and I knew he could take on d5, and I could take, and he could, um, and I was very happy to reach that position. Um, so I played queen d7 here, and uh, but just around about the stage, I was actually, I was actually much more concerned if he just made a move like queen f3. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was really concerned about. Um, I was already, I was actually didn't have that much time left. I think of where I was about move 30 or something. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think I only had about 10 minutes left or something plus the increment, so sort of mild time trouble. Yeah. And um, I was actually sort of thinking what I actually should do here against knight, queen, f3. I certainly didn't want to go knight, b6. No. <laughs> um, even, even although, you know, I'd, I'd had, I would if I had to. Um, but actually, black's, black's absolutely fine here. Um, I think I can, I can actually just make, make a move like queen, e6. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice one. Yeah. Or it, it's possibly even Queen E7 is better. Okay. But Queen E6, yeah, I'm not sure which one's best, but uh, let's just say Queen E6. I, I don't think F5, so maybe he's obviously got F5, I guess, but... Well, we can, um, yeah, we could... Uh... Yeah, but the 
the point being, obviously, you can't take on d5 because of um, Queen e3 check. check. And he can't contest the e file. So I guess. So my next move is rook b2. Yeah. I guess maybe something like king h1, but yeah, still, yeah, rook b2 actually, yeah, rook b2 is still going to be very dangerous very nice. actually, yeah. yeah. What's happening there? Rook b2, queen d5. Maybe queen e2? Queen e2, yeah, knight e3 is coming. Yeah. That's nasty, nasty. I, I tell you, this is this is just what Mickey would do. He he just play this he play this move queen e six just very quickly and uh, and then uh, you know you're in time trouble and then you mess it up completely. <laughs> That's what always happens against Mickey. Yeah. It's uh, queen e six. That's very nice actually. Yeah, but yeah, bishop d five. I guess it may be in time trouble. That was easier to play, a little bit easier to play. I guess just makes it uh, a bit clearer and. Uh, <laughs> See, that's, that's, it's the logical continuation from that's kind of what he's been aiming for. Yeah. I mean, Queen F3 is the other option, but otherwise, if White's not doing either of those, then I'm, you know, Black's just doing very well. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to go Rook B2 or A4. Or... Yeah, that's right. So he took, took, and then Queen E4. Yeah, it just uh, struck me when I was playing through the game, it just how hard it is for White to get rid of you somehow. You know, just, he never quite seems to, you, you sort of think he's got to find some way to, to push your pieces back, but you seem, your queen seems very sticky in the centre there, you know, just... Uh... It's kind of like... The king's very safe, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's it's like, just like a, uh, so, yeah, there's a massive difference between the safety of the kings. Yeah. That pawn structure that I've got is like, nearly like the best possible pawn structure <laughs> that I can have the king's safety. Yeah, yeah. Nice nook on G7, basically. Yeah, yeah. But I can't get there. Whereas White's king is sort of like that's maybe not the worst possible strike you could have. Yeah. No, no it's really uh, yeah. The problem for White is it's actually really difficult. You can't sort of just give up a ball and simplify. No, because his king's always still remains bad all the time. Yeah, no, you yeah. Can't, you can't give up a ball and exchange queens or even exchange rooks. Yeah. Basically, it seems like White just have to. All one can do is more or less just give, just give up the pawn. Basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, let's be, I thought he, uh, you know, um, this isn't very nice to back here, but um, I thought he defended really well. As in, like, yeah. I mean, you know, it felt like during the game that it was, I, I thought I was on the verge of winning, then he would just come up with another good defensive move. Yeah, yeah. I think white position is, is actually really difficult here. Yeah. Um, so, uh, also, because I was in time for that, I repeated it a couple of times. Around. Oh, but that was that was that was good. That was really that looks really uh, Russian and controlled, John. That was. Uh... I, can, I can show you there wasn't that much control in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so around about here, I, I realise I need to go eight four. So if I can get a rook b three in. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a very nice move. So rookie one, queen d5. It's so funny. I mean, you know, he's chasing his queen and all that, and it just sort of moves, you know, just a little bit, little bit, and 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 it, you get the feeling White's never ever solving anything with his yeah. moves. So I guess if queen c5 here, I'd just go to f3. Yeah, yeah, that looks very strong. There's, there's always at least one one square on the diagonal I can go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. White, white just can't uh, just can't see it. White, 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 white. Quite, quite, quite amazing actually. So ah, rook f1. Okay. Yeah, I think just to stop queen f3. At yeah. The I think I'll probably do go rook, rook b3, b3 yeah. queen c5, and queen e4. <laughs> so, so just one square to the uh, to the left, and uh, yeah. yeah. I think I'm I think I'm threatening rook b2 now. Yeah, that must be a big threat. The next move is, is really good. D5 definitely white the best chance. Okay, yeah. Stops, yeah. Stops any media wins. So rook d3. Yeah. E6. Um, around about here, actually, um, if I'd had more time, I should have just played um, uh, King G7. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, King G7, That's yeah. That's always a good move. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was kind of like trying to get to the time control by playing actual threats. Like yeah, B2. yeah. So we repeated again. Ah, perfect. Good technique to get to move 40. Rook D2, Rook D1, and Rook D3. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, okay. It's, an, it's a nasty one for White. Oh, you don't like getting these after the time control. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, I can't remember how much time we had. I think, I think there was, um, I think we maybe got another, um, uh, it's, it's much quicker than the time control of the British now. So maybe another 40 minutes. For okay. The game or something. Yeah. 30 second increment. And I actually used up quite a bit of that time. I'm just thinking about of like a, sort of like a plan. Yeah. Um, so, 
eventually I came across it. I eventually I sort of realised what I should do, but by that stage I only had about 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> So again, plus 30 seconds. So it's an easy position to play, as in sort of, as in you can keep making moves. But at some moment, you have to find the moves that are going to make real progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I still felt under quite a bit of pressure. Yeah. Um. So he he played rook f2 here. King g7. Yeah, you went king g7. That was. Uh, oh, I did finally go king g7. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, that was good. Rook f1, yeah. rook d2. Ah, oh, yeah. So you gave uh, gained some increments there. Yeah. Now finally, I, I realise I need to just win this pawn with rook d five and queen d three. Yeah. 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 Queen c three. He just gave yeah, it away. Of course, he could have. For example, he could have gone a uh, last move. He could have gone to c six, but I just go one um, queen d three. Yeah. This is going to be. He queen d four to defend the pawn. Check defend the pawn on a four and then take on d six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, oh, I just win yeah. the pawn without him being yeah. able to swap anything off. Yeah, and then rook d six afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, and somehow his position hasn't. Yeah, it hasn't. The fundamentals haven't really changed, so uh, <laughs> it's still, it's still, it's still very depressing. To uh, yeah. amazing, actually, real. Yeah, very, very, uh, very instructive. Queen and you know, queen, major piece. Uh, I don't know, not really end game. You know, late, late middle well, game. They it's, say that in, in major piece endings, that it, the most important thing is actually king, king safety. safety. That's right. Yeah, and this is a perfect, uh, perfect example. Actually, really, really, really nice example. So, um, uh, what did he manage? Rookie one, queen d5. Queen b4. Queen b4. It's tough. It's really... Uh... And then queen c6, so I could go rook d3. Very nice, very nice. Ah, it's lovely coordination there. The, the, the queen uh, just... I mean, just there's so many little, you know, one, one, one move along the diagonal moves in this game. You know, queen e4, queen d5, queen c6, all these... Yeah. Incredible, really nice. The queen's basically making king moves. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true, you know. And then the uh, and every time just the you know the rook being activated, it's really, really, really nice. It's, uh, so queen e four and queen c five check. Ouch. Yeah. Queen e three and queen c two. Yeah. So now rook d three is more or less a threat, I guess. Yeah, yeah. that's a big threat. Although you can always, that's what I found annoying. Cause it, sometimes I felt like I was just this is a major threat, but then his queen could always move to a square like e seven that would still require sort of me to do something more. Yeah, so, you know, I didn't feel it was over by any means, basically. Yeah, no, it's uh, you went rookie two. Are you checked? And then queen c six. Yeah, so now I've got this idea of queen h one as well. It's only a long queen move. Yeah, yeah indeed. Yeah. yeah, that one's so. I guess you went rookie one. Queen c2 check, rook e2. Oh, this is great Russian technique, John. I'm really... Uh... And queen c4 this time. Oh, that's a nice one, yeah. So rook d3 is... Uh, yeah. Rook d3 is coming again. So he went queen e7. Okay. And rook d3 anyway. Yeah, he just can't. He, it's so hard for 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 White. It really is amazing. He just can't get uh, can't get free at all from uh, from from all this pressure. Mm. So queen b four, and then you go back to c. I mean, you've just been you've been going, you know, c two, c six, c four, c two. You know, just uh, and every time uh, somehow your position seems to be improving. You know, it's uh, it's quite like Karpov. This really, you know, he can't was... really stop queen f three now, can you? Well, you yeah, can go. One of my threats, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the big ones. So you can go rookie yeah. three. You can go rookie three. Yeah, and I think now this is actually maybe my favourite move of the game coming up. Um, yeah, nice one. Very nice one. This is yet another idea. The fact that uh, this A pawn can actually be a strong piece. Yeah. Um, yeah, so rook B3. Uh, this idea of also, um, yeah. Yeah, lovely. And then, and then A takes nice. B3 after. Or even queen takes b3, but a takes b3 wins. Very nice. Yeah, very, very, very nice uh, tactic. Yeah. This idea of like, um, I remember reading, in, I think it might have been one of John Nunn's books, this idea of when a piece is attacked, and then it just actually just moves away from the attacking piece, but along the same line. Yeah. With a piece of square. It's sometimes quite a difficult move to see. Yeah, yeah. But also it sometimes makes a nice impression where you just sort of move away from the piece. So yeah. Yeah, this, this was this was a very nice move. He went back to e7 just to try and keep on covering things. Ooh, and now a long queen move. Queen h1. This time I did get in, yeah. 
Yeah, that is horrible now. H4. And then rook b1. Very nasty. Ah, rook e1. Queen h2 check. Very nice. Rook b3 check. It's weird, your pieces keep on going back to the same squares all the time. And uh, and every time it just feels like it's more dangerous. You know, it's really weird. Really, really weird. It's uh, rook e3 and queen c2. Yeah. So my idea now, I wanted to go queen c1, basically. Ah, okay, so right. The ideas of, um, uh, of going, I think, then queen f1. Yeah, that's very nasty. Forces king up. I think there's ideas of going queen f1. If he goes king g4, I can take on e3 and then go f5 and then f6 main. Oh, lovely, lovely. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, that... I think previous move, I think queen g1 was even stronger than queen... So well, the idea, same idea, queen g1. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that's probably... that. Yeah, I can imagine that. That's even... Uh... I didn't actually see g1. I looked at, uh, I, I looked at c1, but I didn't... I didn't... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that. I mean, you've just been moving along the C file all the time. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, it's got to be. This is much more thematic, I think. Yeah, and also, I thought white was virtually in Zutwang as well. Yeah. Oh, and this was a, this was this uh, lovely finish now. Queen C1. Yeah. Attacking the rook on E3. Yeah, he can't go rook B3. He went rook D3. And now this fantastic finish. Really nice move. Ah, oh, Queen D2. Yeah. <laughs> Really, really nice one. Yeah, so rook d2 is not possible. Rook b3, we've got uh, queen takes d6. Mm -hmm. And also, I guess king e4 is more or less the only thing you can do. And then you go f5. f5 check. I was, I was going to go f5, although queen e2 is good as well. Queen e2 is also, yeah, very, very, very powerful as well. Queen d2 is great. Oh, it's a, re it's a really nice game, John. Really fantastic. Yeah, I thought, well, I mean, you know, I said, like, kind of like, um, obviously, during the tournament, I mean, I felt great after playing it, although, um, obviously, I still had some games to go and I had to focus on those. But afterwards, even though the tournament ended, I lost my last game, which obviously never nice. It's yeah. been a really good tournament for me. Kind of like, um, sort of like, uh, still this playing this game, sort of like, um, I felt a bit warm, you know, feel a bit warm. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I think, uh, yeah. This, this is a, a really incredibly thematic, uh, you know, queen and major piece ending where, you know, where, where just, you, you just, you know, king safety is the, is the most important thing. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is a very good example of that. I mean, I, I can't actually remember another game where, uh, well, where it's been sort of close on material maybe, where my king's been so safe. Yeah. <laughs> normally, normally you have to think about it a little bit at least yeah yeah safety. but here i could just completely ignore it it's kind of it's lovely to have a game where you, <laughs> <laughs> where you, can yeah, just, you don't have to worry and you can no, do it not, you know often you get to a situation even when your king looks quite safe that your opponent will try some swindling attempt or so you have to sort of, you know exactly yeah or even think about some check there's always some check yeah you have to think about. exactly <laughs> There's amazing structure this yeah i mean it's in exchange chess you know you, you put the pawn down there and just uh <laughs> in yeah. bug house you know just put the pawn down and and save it but here you just somehow you got it yeah exactly yeah oh fantastic john i mean thanks very much indeed for showing us that game it was a really great game and uh um yeah thoroughly enjoyed that so um and yeah thanks very much indeed also for uh for chatting to us and doing the interview really enjoyed it no it's lovely it's a real pleasure and um hopefully in um uh you know hopefully things will get back to some sort of normality soon yeah and be able to and, uh, we'll see each other actually in the in, in actually in the real world basically. yeah nice. that would be nice that would yeah. be nice anyway thanks very much john yeah thank, thank you. you thanks very much